I made a cursory inspection of the cassette stacks to try to find something as close to Christmas as possible. It would be ideal if I could organize all these tapes by date and attempt to coordinate each broadcast with the calendar. Maybe I will someday, but I'm making no promises. What happens now is when I do come across something dated, near or on a holiday, I will try to save it and air it around the same time. We didn't do too bad here as we enter the vault and dust off a recording of a dumb birthday game from 29 years ago. December 26th, 1991. The players? Barbara from Newton. Ruth from Boston, also known as Dave Maynard's Ruth. Tim from Newton, but only briefly, because Norm cannot understand him and thinks it's a put-on, so he hangs up on him. Sorry, Tim. And he's replaced by Larry in Boston. Is it just me, or do I detect some romance in the air with Barbara? Well, at least from Larry's point of view. Andrew from Natick. Mike Epstein in the control room, but on the phone. I take part, also on the phone. And then Jack Hart in traffic. Andrew tells a joke that needed clearance from the WBZ Good Conduct Broadcasting Handbook. One of the featured birthdays is Carlton Fisk, and because of this, I request Norm do his baseball vendor impression, and boy, are we in for a treat. Norm also adds his Sherm Feller impression. Now, Sherm was the Red Sox Fenway Park PA announcer for, I think, around a thousand years. And because of this, it prompts a discussion with Ruth, that gets rather testy. At one point, Norm wonders if he'll make it to his 50th year in broadcasting. At that time, he was in his 47th. Featured commercials. We get two from Wachusett Mountain. And yes, they sing the song. The doctors of the Mass Medical Society promoting the use of seatbelts and please, no drinking and driving. There's a commercial read by Norm for Ginsana. Of course, it's available at all your local pharmacies that are no longer with us, like Brooks, Rite Aid, Medimart. Norm guarantees that if you try it, you'll have a body just like him. There's a First Night 1992 promo from <clears throat> your official First Night Information Station, WBZ. There's also a tease for who is substituting for Tom Bergeron on the morning show. It's David Brudnoy. Whatever happened to Tom? Did he make anything of himself after he left WBZ? And we close with a call from Keith in Winchester, who brings up Nelson Bragg, who, in the early days of TV, hosted New England's first morning show called Swan Boat on Channel 4 here in Boston. Thank you for listening, and I hope everyone had a Christmas that was just so darn nice. Incidentally, the uh, Boston Celtics lost in their game out of Chicago to the Bulls. Bulls 121, the, Chicago, the Boston Celtics 99. Thank you just so much. Okay, we have a full panel here, and we're all set to play. And I know you're excited. A little, a little shudder of excitement must be coursing through your body because it's time for the dumb birthday game. And we have uh, Barbara is one of uh, people who will be playing the game with us. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Norman. Hello. You're out in Newton, as I understand it. Yes, I am. Okay. We have Ruth, who is here in Boston. Hi, hi. Oh, it's my friend Ruth. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. And we have Tim, who is in also in Newton. Good I know him. Say that again. Good I know him. Good I knew. Is that, uh, th- th- am I misinterpreting what you're just saying, or is that a foreign language that means? Uh, he's got time to put the shrimp on the barbie, no? Are we going to have problems here, Tim? No, I don't think so, am I? Okay. Uh, how you doing? All right, mate. How are you? And uh, what else is new with you? Tell me some more, Tim. Yeah, well, what would you like to know? Hey, how about, how about if we try somebody instead of Tim? What do you say we do that? Because I'm, I'm having a language barrier. There's a language barrier there that I'm having problems with. Uh, we have Andrew uh, here in, in uh, who's in Natick. Hi, Andrew. How you doing? Bonjour. Comment ça va? Oh, my God. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, I, no, I know you. Très bien. Merci. Et vous? Uh, bien. Merci. Bon. Uh, shall we sing, you know, the, all the, the words to, to La Vie en Rose in French? Because I, I, every, every time I hear French, I want to do that. Yeah, you know, but that could be misconstrued as something other than ethical. Something no. other than ethical? <laughs> ethical? <laughs> if you sing La Vie en Rose in French. Okay. Well, okay, we'll skip it then. I, I, maybe you have a point. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we have uh, Mike with us, of course, Mike Epstein, who's the WBZ top notch producer on the program this very day. Hi, Mike. Good morning. And we have another WBZ top-notch producer, Tony Nesbitt, who's with us uh, this morning. Hi, Tony. Oh, oh you're talking to me? Uh, is there another? Is there another Tony Nesbitt? What kind of what kind of business is that? 
How you doing, Norm? I'm doing okay. Yeah, I think that was uh, uh, Tim, Tim the English baker. Who was you think he was okay? Yeah, well, I don't know. I, 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 had, I, I couldn't understand what he was saying. Uh, Could you? I, he said, good day, good day, Norm. Yeah, he kept on saying good day in an Australian mode. Oh, so, so I shouldn't have hung up on him then. Maybe not, but hey, we have Larry in Boston who's with us now. Oh, we have Larry in, hey, Larry in Boston. Hey, Norman. Hey, I understood what you said, so right away we're on even ground. <laughs> Hello? Uh, or as they say these days, we're on a level playing field, which is, that's the big, that's the big thing, the end thing right now. Mm. By, by the way, Norm, uh, the gentleman who was on before the news uh, was fantastic. All that stuff about Nikola Tesla was we, uh, exact, gonna... exactly true. Written, recently, oh, written up you... recently in Smithsonian Magazine. Oh, is that right? Yep. Yeah. He, oh, so you guys know all that stuff. He yeah. is definitely someone who everyone forgets about, and he really did invent a lot of uh, things in radio, and but Marconi took credit for him. His PR for him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Program. Now, who, who just said, is that you, Andrew? Yes, it is. And you, are, you a, are you a radio bug, too, on knowing all that stuff? No, I just, uh, I read Smithsonian faithfully, and Tesla was <clears> written up in Smithsonian, uh, I'd say within the last year. Okay, is that Nikola, Nikola te Tesla. Uh, Tesla. Yeah. Tesla. Tesla, T S L A. T S L A. Okay, maybe maybe that fellow. I hope he will call back when we have some more time and we can talk some more about it. it I don't great. know. I don't know how many people are interested in broadcasting. I sure am, and I know you, Tony, and obviously you, uh, Andrew. Are. Yes, sir. Well, I find it terribly yeah. boring. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because you're in the business, and what the heck. <laughs> we also have Jack with us, of course. Jack Hyde, WBZ, uh, twenty-four hour traffic network guardian. Yeah, hello. <laughs> and and uh, and a sort of giggler. Excellent. Par excellence. Okay, we have some interesting birthdays to a guest today. A lot of yeah. interesting people. Yeah, we're born on December 26th. That's your opinion. Pardon me? That's your opinion. Yeah, that's my opinion, yeah. But I happen to be a thorough. I happen to, uh, I've, I've, conducted, I've conducted the dumb birthday game longer than anybody in the history of broadcasting, including Nikola Tesla. You're the only one who's ever done it. That's true. That's, that's also true. You don't have the slight advantage in that, yeah. That's, I really do. I may be the only one. That's right. I am the only one, and therefore Norman. I'm the authority. Norman. Yes. This is Larry. Yes, Larry. I know some people who listen to this show, uh, the kind of qualify this show, you just think of it as a dumb birthday game. Yeah. I know some people think of it as a, the dumb norm game. <laughs> oh, well, that's really cute, Larry. That's really. <laughs> Can we that's, get Tim back? Uh, if you're trying to win. <laughs> If you're trying to worm my, your way into my heart with that kind of flattery, uh, it just won't work because I'm oblivious to that kind of stuff. I only like insults. Listen, Norman, I loved your olive joke. You love what? But your olive joke. Oh, the olive joke, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there he goes again. We tell jokes. Yeah, yeah Jack, tell a joke. Jack is, Jack is uh, remembering that and giggling again. I'm sorry, who, who are we talking to, Larry? Is that you, this Larry? This is Andrew talking. Can I tell a joke? I guess you could, Andrew, although... Can we say the word condom on the radio? Oh, I guess you did. The word condom? The condom? <laughs> let me check. Hold on a minute while I, I check the... Uh, Take okay. a look at it in the rule book. Yeah, the WBZ, have... WBZ, WBZ broadcasting... How about prophylactic? Handy, handy <laughs> book. Well, hold on a minute. Let's... Uh, well, let's hang on, one word at a time. Let, yeah, yeah, let's do one word at a time there. <laughs> well, let me tell the joke. Hold, hold, on, a, hold, on, hold on a minute. On hold on a minute. I'm checking the WBZ. Okay. Uh, WBZ Good Conduct Broadcasting Handbook. <laughs> No, uh, this is because this sounds, is a, sounds like it's on fire. Yeah. It's got uh, it's got two pages. You know, this is a big book. It's two pages. Yes, it's a, you, can use, you can use the word condom. Uh, what other words do you have in mind, though, before we get to the end no, of this show? No, nothing joke? more severe than condom. Condom is the catchy word. That is the word. word of the month. Fire away. And what is the difference between a used tire and 365 used condoms? Right away, I'm getting nervous oh, about this thing. What's the difference thing. between a good year and a great year? <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad. That's, that's not, it's not funny, but at least it's clean and I can breathe easier. <laughs> okay, here's the first, uh, the first birthday that oh I'd like you to guess at. And uh, it's Richard Widmark. Oh, wow. Mm. Richard Woodmark, oh, yeah. the actor, who started out just sneer no, no, sneering and laughing a lot. And uh, lately, he's, uh, I think he's an excellent actor. He's a... Uh, He's, I think he, he even looks better as he gets older. Oh, yeah. Okay, Richard Woodmark. Let's start with you, Barbara. How old do you think Richard Woodmark is on this December 26th? Uh, I'll say 68. 68, says Barbara. And uh, Ruth, what do you think? Uh, I'd say 70. 
70. Okay. And Larry? Mm, I think 73. 73. Can I take my bat? Can, can you do what? Take it back. Take it back? That number. So you want to give another number? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. How about 79? 79. Okay. And uh, Andrew, what do you say? 76. 76. This is Andrew. Oh, don't, would you be quiet? <laughs> I almost regret, I hate when somebody says 76, because I know Jack is going to pop up. With, that's a spirit, that's a spirit. <laughs> Mike, what do you think? I'll say 75. Almost a spirit. Yeah, no. <laughs> almost a spirit. I don't quite have the spirit, but I'm getting there. Okay. You know something, I'm getting nauseous. <laughs> Tony, what do you say? I'm going to say 71. 71. Yeah. Okay. I and got his book. What? Nothing. No, you think he's cheating. <laughs> well, well, hold on a minute. He loves till... this game. He plays it all the time. Yeah, he does. It, he, he eats, sleeps, and drinks the dumb birthday game. <laughs> as, as matter, that's, right. that's the only way you can get good at it. As a matter of fact, I, I had the headphones on last night, though I didn't call and play, and uh, fell asleep and woke up just as you were beginning to play. And you didn't call? I uh, know. That wasn't kind. Okay, Jack, what do you think? How old is Richard Woodmark today? Uh, 74. 74. Okay, now comes the, the moment of truth, that magic moment when we find out how old he actually is and we check the birth records. I don't have any idea what this means. No, it doesn't mean anything. It just felt like having a, just something what? a little different. What is this, rewinding a tape, or is this about these <laughs> bird calls? Well, according to the label here, this is, this is something about birds. Birds, I, I have no idea. What it's it, a what bird it called a rewind tape bird. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's videotape. Yeah. <laughs> there was more. There was more surface noise on that tape than there were sound effects. But hey, what the heck? What the heck? Nobody says the game is perfect. <laughs> Richard Woodmark is actually seventy-seven oh, years oh, old, oh. and so Andrew, wow. who said seventy-six, yeah. is correct. He's the closest. Hey, very good. Have you ever played the game before, Andrew? Yes, I have. Oh, I see. I was going to say this is hey, your another ring. <laughs> Another ringer. Yeah, hey, I was so. on with Wolfie one night. So. Oh, no, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, well, everything from here on will be a piece of cake. Yeah, you, you, you have my sympathies. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I haven't been the same since. <laughs> <laughs> one thing you have to say about Wolfie, he's a knee dresser and a swell dancer. I could tell that from the phone conversation. Yeah. <laughs> ad, -lib ad libbing, maybe not so great, but what the heck. No, I'm Yes? Well, why don't I listen to Wolf? I think I'll listen to the, uh, Dr. Professor Curry. Does he sound like uh, Professor Irwin Curry? Yeah. Irwin <laughs> Curry makes more sense than <laughs> yeah, That's right. Curry. Yeah. <laughs> However, I do a swell Irwin Curry imitation also. Okay, Steve Allen's birthday is today. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling... Um, let's see. Let, I tell you, well, let's start with Jack. How old is uh, Steve Allen? And this will be the start of something big. Hey. Excellent. Right, Dave Maynard's theme song. Um, That's right. Written by Steve Allen, fine pianist, writer, <laughs> comic. Played by Liz Brown. Yeah. <laughs> and never a smoker. Um, <laughs> That's right. How he, how he can tell you <laughs> how to give up smoking when he's never smoked in his entire life, I've never understood. Yeah. <laughs> but I would like that video where he interviews this lady I never heard Robert of. Robert Seifert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Didn't she discover the hair tonic, too? Did he have that powder? I'm not really sure. That might be the same person. Anyway, Jack, how old is Steve Allen on this very day? 75. 75. Okay, and uh, we're going to skip you, Tony, cause, uh, and we'll go to Mike and come back to you. All right. Mike, well, how old do you think is <laughs> Steve Allen is? Okay, I think he's 77. 77. And nobody said that's more than the spirit. I'm so grateful <laughs> to you for that. <laughs> Andrew, what do you say? Uh, 74. 74. Larry? Uh, 68. 68. What do you say, little Ruth? I think, oh, thank you. I think 72. 72. Okay, and Barbara? 72. 72. And Tony? Um, let me see. It's your book. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not sure if he's 70 or 74. I'm going to have to say 74. 74. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm trying to think of a quote from that commercial. Uh, it, 
something about if you're going to light up. Don't, light don't, up. don't, don't light die up. from the habit. <laughs> yeah. that, right. uh, that you never light yeah. up. Yeah. Light right, up. Right, right. Yeah. I never, I never, hi, I'm Steve Allen. I'm not a smoker, but I play one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> And I was cured by a, a guy who plays a doctor on TV. <laughs> That's correct. Okay, Steve Allen, let's find out how old he actually is. And this, He's uh, never smoked. He must be an angel. That's right, too. You ought to see his lungs. They're just so darn pink. <laughs> it's why he attracts all the women. Come look at my lungs, honey, he says. And, uh, that and maybe we'll light up. Oh, yeah, they light up. And, uh, anyway, Steve Allen, I thought you were going to guess this, Tony. I called on you last because we talked about his He's age. He's 70, earlier. isn't he? He is 70. That's, that's correct. I couldn't remember. That was, the, that was the age you couldn't remember. Uh, Ruth and Barbara are absolutely yeah. correct. They yeah. said 72. <laughs> If that doesn't clear my name, it's broadcasting for I don't know what that's right. Because I know, I know, I, I know that Tony and I talked about him before. Norman, What's that? Isn't Ruth a sure business person? Ruth has is, Ruth is been working through the years with uh, Dave Maynard. Well, she should be disqualified from a Why is that? sure business question. <laughs> Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, right. No, I don't. Oh, you should ask everyone else up to her so they'll get a good idea. Oh, yeah, right. It's only a game. <laughs> I got one. Yeah, yeah. I, I, would, I, I, would, I wouldn't get too, I wouldn't get too, uh, too excited about all of this. I don't this. read well. Yeah, or Steve Allen would say, uh, what would Steve Allen say? Uh, anyway, you guessed because, oh, 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 because you and Barbara have guessed 72. 72. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay. This is also the uh, birthday today. Is also the birthday of Alan King. Oh, oh great yeah. comedian. Alan, actually, he's kind of funny. I saw him on a on a uh, cable special. He was doing a show. I I don't know. It was Carnegie Hall, or maybe I'm thinking of uh, Mason. No, he was because he was on Johnny Carson. Yeah, and he he did. Yeah, he did it. He did it. Yeah, I saw him do a one man show. He was he's a very funny guy. Alan King also was in a play. That the that Ted Knight did later on. Remember the guy who was the father of uh, some teenagers and young people? And oh, sure. What was the name of that play? Do you remember? My Three Sons. <laughs> <laughs> Something, either that or Lassie. I forget which. I was getting them mixed up. Anyway, Alan King. Let's see how old uh, he is. Let's start with Larry. How old do you think Larry uh, Alan King is today? 66. 66? Okay. And Andrew? I'll say 67. And uh, what do you think, Mike? I think it's 69. And what do you say, Tony? 68. Jack? 71. 71. Okay. And uh, Barbara? 63. 63. And uh, Ruth? I'm going for 69. The same as, uh, as Mike Epstein right. said. Okay. Now it's time to check, again, the birth records, which we always have right here in the birth record department of the WBC Broadcast City. I don't know why we have this department here, but John Spinola, our general manager, says it's terribly important. <laughs> oh, I figure he's the king of comedy, right? Yeah. Oh, so this is the uh, thing here, the uh, the laughter. Looks to the thrill in Norm's voice. <laughs> His entire thrill is shuddering through my body right this very moment. You got to see him, he's shuddering at this moment. Yeah, this moment I'm breaking out into a sweat. I'm just so darn excited. Okay, Alan King's actual age, ladies and gentlemen, his actual age, and even he doesn't know this because I have it in a sealed envelope. <laughs> we haven't told him yet because he'd be humiliated. He's kept it in Funk and yeah. Wagnall's port right. all day, right? That's right. He thinks he's 23. But he's actually 64 oh. years old. Mm. I believe Barbara is the closest. Barbara. She said, <clears throat> she said wow. 63. Wow. One and, a half. and that means that Barbara has uh, two out of three so far. Ruth has one, and uh, Andrew also has one victory. And uh, no victories yet, but... What's there for the busy guys? By, yeah, really. Uh, yeah, by Mike, <laughs> Tony, Jack, up there. and Larry. Yeah, in case mm -hmm. you think that it's stacked in favor of the BZ folks, now you know. I don't think that. <laughs> You're a wonderful person. That's Actually, well. we get all the wrong answers earlier in the afternoon. Right. Yeah. I leave them in your mailbox here, <laughs> just, just to keep things on the up and up. Yeah, we okay. have to do this every once in a while, so people will stop accusing us. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. Every time we get Birthday called before, Ola. every time we get be called before a federal grand jury, we uh, we make the game harder for those people who are involved in our little scam. Yeah. 
And uh, it's Chris Shambliss, the former baseball player, who used to play. Was he a catcher? He was a first baseman with the Yankees. First baseman with the Yankees, of course, of yeah. course. Chris Shambliss. Today is Chris Shambliss's birthday. And uh, how many... What's that, please? When was he playing today? Yeah. When was he playing with the Yankees? See now. Back in the 70s. Oh. 70s, yeah. early 80s. Right now, he's light, He's uh, he's uh, lighting all the candles on it. And actually, they're not candles on his birthday cakes. <laughs> they're candles actually in the shape of baseball bats. What's his name? Chris <laughs> Shambliss. His name is Chris Shambliss, yes. <laughs> except, except when he's calling girls, in which he uses another name. Mickey Mantle. Todd McLaren. <laughs> it's that name. <laughs> it's funny. I don't know why that name came up. Uh, a, a guy I know who's a very good broadcaster himself was out on the West Coast. From He's from Massachusetts. His name actually is Todd McLaren. It'd be funny if his folks were listening now. If he's calling and, girls, he could be a little too. How old is Todd McLaren? Todd McLaren is, the, is younger than Chris Shambliss. Anyway, how old is Chris Shambliss? Let's start with, uh, let's see, let's start with you, Andrew. Um, I'm going to say, let's say, 43 years old. 43 years old, you're going to say 43, okay. And uh, Ruth, what do you think? I never, I don't know who he is at all, but I'll say 41. <laughs> 41. Yeah, that's I a love good, baseball. if you don't, if you do love baseball, love be, but you never heard of Chris Shambliss? No, no, only know all the Red Sox. Just the Red Sox? And some others, but so you don't play all the losers. You don't pay attention when they're playing some <laughs> nice other team. Nice going, Barbara. <laughs> okay, Barbara, what do you think? Um, I'd say 46. 46. And Mike, what do you say? I'd say 45. What do you think, Jack? Oh, right around there. Uh, <laughs> right around there. <laughs> For, 44. 44. And what do you say, Tony? Oh, oh, oh I'm on deck now. Uh, oh. 45. <laughs> Nobody, that was a strike, wasn't nobody it? seemed to giggle too much when you <laughs> said I'm, I'm, on, I'm on deck now. We were all out in left field. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I thought. Oh, anyway, he was just rosin us. <laughs> Larry, what do you think? How old is Chris Shambliss at this very day, December 26? 46. You're saying the same that Barbara said. Good you heaven, think you can? Yeah. You, well, she, he's trying to score some points with you, Barbara. <laughs> no, he's not going uh, he to is. He, he wants you. He wants you. He wants you badly. Uh, and, lots of luck to him. Okay. <laughs> oh, you cool. You, That's two of us. You cool tart. Out. You're a tart, Barbara. You're a saucy miss. A saucy you wench. Are. Oh, you wench. You're a wench. Okay. Okay. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay. And if you're at an outdoor picnic, uh, you know, like in your backyard, where you get the grill going, she could be a barbecue. A, a bar barbecue saucy wench. Follow that up. Oh, that's oh, that, yeah, isn't that awful? I remember, good year that's and awful. great year. Who said that? Yeah. Who said that? The difference between a good joke and a great joke. Tell me who said and, that. There's a lot no, of nobody, he, whoever said it will not be uh, identified right. pending notification of next of kin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chris Shambliss actually is. Oh, here's this for, 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 no, for, we got for this all all again. Christmas. Yeah, I we the next guy up we're gonna guess is also a baseball player. Does that mean we gotta hear this? Uh, no. Tucker made me no, another version. Okay, Chris Shambliss actually is forty three, yes. which is what Andrew said. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so now we have a tie between Barbara and Andrew, both of whom have two correct answers. I hope they live happily ever after. <laughs> Barbara and Andrew are a lovely pair. <laughs> and I'm, what? I'm sending them a salad fork. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send the salad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's, here's, here's another one. Now, this is about the last known person born on this day. <laughs> oh. There are a couple of other names I have, and, and if we have a tie, we'll, we'll go to those. Oh, go to them anyway. Oh, go to them anyway. Oh, this, okay. this is a guy who's so hard on the game, who's so excited about it, he just can't <laughs> stop playing it. <laughs> okay, Carlton Pudge Fisk. Pudge oh, Fisk. Oh, I, was, I was saving a very special person for, for this point. I know he's got a good friend at WBZ. Pudge Fisk is? He's a very good friend of Bob LaBelle. Oh, I didn't, I didn't personal. realize that. Personal. Oh, personal friend. Yeah, really. Oh, oh really? Right. Well, 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 a little story <laughs> behind the story. No, I've mean, known each other for a long time. Oh, well, that's, that's kind of nice. They exchange mitts at Christmas or something. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hmm. 
Okay, Pudge Fish. Let's start. I, let's start with. Uh, let's see. We'll start with you, Barbara. How old is Pudge Fish? Oh God, let's see. I'll say forty-one. You'd say forty-one. Okay. And uh, Ruth, what I'm would you say? I'm say forty-six. Forty-six. Okay, there's a lot of tension building up here now. <laughs> <laughs> so much so that I can almost stay awake. It's palpable. <laughs> My eyelids, however, are drooping and I'm stifling a yawn. No. <laughs> Lest you think I'm too excited. Norm, yes? may, may I request that you do your baseball vendor imitations? Oh, baseball. Okay. You have to play. The, you have to play the music. Mike. Oh yeah, no. It, okay, you know. well, we'll get to the music. Okay, I will do that right. because it's much requested. By whom? <laughs> By Tony. Well. On occasion. Very anyway, La Larry, what do you think? Uh, how old do you think Pudge Fisk is today? Can you give half, half, half? Can you give what? Half. I want to say forty-one and a half. <laughs> You can do that if you want. <laughs> it'll sound, it'll I don't sound. want to say one like Barbara. I didn't have any luck with her last time. Well, you won't have any luck with me anyway. You're just trying to go halfway. No. Oh. I think there's a little flirtation huh. going on here. Hey, uh, Larry, anyway, do you want to guess or, 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 or do something else? 42. <laughs> How much? 42. 42. Okay. And uh, Andrew, what do you say? Uh, 44. 44. Andrew says 44. And Mike says? Says 42. 42. And, uh, no, I was going to say that's Wolfie's waist size, but that's, that's <laughs> much, too, much too small. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's his, his hat size. That's his, <laughs> no, that's his wrist size, actually. <laughs> Tony, uh, uh, he's, you know what's going to happen now. He's listening and he's going to call. <laughs> no, no, we're asking for it. We're really no, asking for it. Okay. Tony, what do you say? I don't mean to throw you a curve on this one, but 44. <laughs> 44. Okay. And uh, what do you think, Jack? Well, let's see if, I'll, if we can take it home with 4-3. <laughs> take it home with 4-3. I see. Take it home, home base. <laughs> Catch it behind home base. Okay. Yeah. Couldn't work anything in with chest pad. Chest pad. Right? <laughs> I thought there'd be a little bit of raunchy talk there with the chest pad. Just the tip of my chest pad. I thought he was 43. We could have did cop jokes, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're now going to find out how old Pudge Fisk is today. Shall you my imitation now? Yes, yeah. please. Okay. Ice cold Coca Cola. Yeah. <laughs> Popcorn. Yeah. I didn't think it was that funny. I'll continue. What the hell? I'm going to go Montreal for Ice cream bags. Yeah. Yeah. What? Red Sox. Yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Hot dogs. <laughs> Hot dogs here. Want to hear my famous imitation of uh, the Sherm fellow who does the PA system? Yeah. No, I mean, no, that. No, that's not so bad. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I love Schirmfeld. He's one of the sweetest people in the business. But I can't understand. A, I can't understand a word he ever says on that damn PA system. Except the Hispanic players' names, you can understand that. Yeah. <laughs> Did he call you up this week? Uh, uh, Schirmfeld. Yeah. No, I don't think Sherman's ever called me. I gave him your me. number because he. I spoke to him and he wanted to say hello. To you. Oh uh, no, he's a nice man. I. I. I, 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 uh, I, have, I, have, <laughs> no, I have this phone. I was going to have him on the show. I was going to have him on the show one night, and we talked because uh, Sherm actually was about the first talk host. He, he was on Boston the first Radio. One. He yeah, was. he actually pioneered new total ground. I don't think mo most people don't know that. You know, he was at the Hotel Bradford in those days. Well, no, even before that. And he had a live audience, though. Yeah, no, 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 not the Hotel Bradford. Norm's got a live audience. Yes, no. he did. Ask Dave no, no, Maynard. No, 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 no. Now, wait a minute, now, wait a minute. No, no. I don't have to ask Dave. I was, he was, Dave Maynard wasn't even around He was then. at Emerson College hey. and used to stand in no, line to no. watch your fella. Yeah, but not at, not at the Hotel Bradford. That's where WBZ was. And that's not where that was not where Sherm Feller was. He was out there, WVD. No, no, later on, later on. <laughs> Shut up there, Don't Ruth. Don't fight me. with me. I just no. got home. 
No, no, I'm no, no. He he began it. He began it. <laughs> kids, kids. He began his talk show where people would go go to his show. It was on between midnight and one a.m. Where's the fight, Bill? Mike? Uh, it was Norm. on. It was on WEI. Is where he was. Norm. And in this hey. Hello, Norm. Hello. Hello. Yes. Oh, I mean, yes. don't, don't tell oh. me about history of radio. I was there. Oh, he's going to cry. Dave made it to some foreigner from upstate New York. What does he know about what happened in the 40s in Boston? He radio? knows Pudge Fisto. We're going to no. find out how old he is. Well, I'll yeah, tell you how old he is. He'll be a year older by the time he gets okay. And he doesn't even know Dave Maynard. He only knows Bob Lobel. So <laughs> okay. okay, Pudge Fist actually is, and nobody really cares now because this is I don't remember. Fun. <laughs> what I guess. Okay, Pudge Fisk actually is 44 years old. Yes. Tony and Andrew both yes. hit it on oh, the button. Andrew, oh. right. Clean it up. So it means that actually Andrew is now uh, he's being saluted by the entire crew here. <laughs> Thank at the, you. Thank you. Thank you. As the winner, because you got three. That's it. Uh, correct. All right. Yeah. I and, uh, Thank you. Give us the PS's. No, no, Barbara, you, Tony, like Ruth, recon. Larry, Mike, Jack. <laughs> It's been real. Mm -hmm. Andrew, it goes to your head pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> you, you, you understand that you get a very tacky prize, which you're going to hate, so don't get too grateful just yet, Well, it's fella. better than not getting any prize at all. That's you, true. That's PS true. one, so anyhow. You, you know, no, you haven't seen the tacky prizes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do, uh, you do well, Barbara, because you, you got two, and you almost, you, you were right there right till the very end. Well, it wasn't for that Larry, I would have done better. Aren't you going to give us <laughs> the two extras? <laughs> I don't think so. Just toss the names. Oh, only if we had a tie. I'll give you the names. Okay, you Barbara. Give it to us anyway because it's fun. Barbara. Yes. It's going to be better second time around. <laughs> only okay. in your dreams. Okay. <laughs> you sound very protective out there. That. Later on, when I get rid of this unruly crowd, I'll tell you. I'll tell you about. I'll tell you about Sherman Feller. I was Feller. just going to say, you talking about Sherman Feller? Yeah, I'll talk yeah. to you about Sherman Feller too. I'll tell you about okay. Dave. I think if Sherman Feller about called the... up Wolfie and Sherm did his PA. Routine. They wouldn't understand a thing. Oh no, anything. sure, sure, I've got it all over Wolfie. Sure, I'm telling great <coughs> stories. Okay, here's the. What, what am I saying? Oh, you wanted to know two other people. The two other people. Oh, that's right. Who uh, we did not guess. One. One would be uh, an actress named Jane La Potere. Who? <laughs> See? See what I mean? L-A-P-O-T-A-I-R-E. La Potere. Jane La Potere. Nobody knows who she is. No. Is that correct? <laughs> okay. She's, no idea. she's 47. Good. Anyway. Happy birthday. 40, Happy birthday, 47 blessed years old. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. And the other person who you might know if you're in the record business, oh. he's a well-known record producer. Not a not a recording Andy artist Gordy. named Phil Spector. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, we all know him. Uh, you, all, you all know Phil Spector. Yeah, okay. good reputation. We all know him. I can't okay. believe you skipped him. Jeez. Really? Oh, okay. They just they just came <laughs> out with a huge um, I think a box set. Yeah, yeah it's it like a, a retrospective. Yeah. Of uh, Phil Spector. Yeah. Shame yeah. On yeah. The oh, really? Yes. He is that well known? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, yes. Well, okay. all right. We, I haven't told you his age, so we can still get it. I think I think he did the sound on Sean Fellows' first broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you really? Do you guys really know Phil? Oh sure. yes, yeah, yeah, really. Absolutely. He was married sure. to. Uh, um, He's very big with the rock. It's a, a Ronnie Spector. And kept her prisoner for years. Oh my! I, no, I, 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 I trying to work out a deal where you, you would say he he's married to Ann Spector, like Philip Ann Spector, Ann Spector. I don't know. I, oh. He is actually a very well known guy. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, guess how old he is then? Although, All right, I think unless unless Barbara gets this, uh, Andrew still has one. And there's no way any of you can get caught up, no matter what you do, or no matter how you how you lavish me with gifts. I will not back down. Okay, let's start with Jack then. How old is Phil Spector? Well, you know, uh, at uh, <laughs> oh jeez, <laughs> at one point, uh, part of his family moved to the uh, moved to a, a section of uh, Pennsylvania, and, and they were he... called for there on in the Erie Spectres. Oh. <laughs> oh. Some of them were uh, known to frequent houses of ill repute. They were prospectors. Some of his children are the Shirelles. <laughs> <laughs> prospectors. <laughs> I don't feel well. <laughs> if, you think, if you think David Brudner, if you heard him yesterday fetching for four hours on the air, uh, how could he be subject, if subjected to this? He wouldn't be able to go on at all. <laughs> okay, Jack, how old How old do you say? Did you guess? You didn't oh, guess. No, you you were rambling, so. Connie. Well, you didn't yeah. say about Phil Spector's <laughs> age. Uh, 52. 52. Oh. Okay, 52. Now, he said 52. Mm -hmm. Don't make fun of him.
It's okay. It's no, a good thing. Uh, Tony, what do you say? Well, if I can expectorate. And <laughs> I can expectorate. Man. <laughs> expectorate. <laughs> and maybe I'll spectrolate. Uh, speculate, speculate. Um, this is a low class show. You can say spit if you want to. You <laughs> can say condom is great. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, don't say condom. This is not a political show. 50. He is now 54. 54 years old today, Phil Spector. Yeah. Okay, Mike Epstein, what That's do you say? That's exactly what I was going to say. 54. 54, you want to stick with that? Okay. Norm, how were the cookies, by the way? The cookies were delicious. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And uh, Andrew, what do you say? Fifty-three. Fifty-three. I can hear the radio going on there at uh, your play. No, it's Jack's. Uh, it's uh, his his two-way police and fire radio and all that. Oh yeah, it's and, nothing. A few cars just blew up, but. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a seventeen-car pileup <laughs> just by the East Berkeley Street. Uh, <laughs> 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 that, that is about as local a joke as you can do. Uh, Larry, how old do you say Phil Spector is? How much? Could I, could I do this by elimination? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Well, he's not 39. He's not 39. Okay. You got me, Larry. Well, in that case, Larry, how old do you suppose he really uh, you genius. know, is, you say? 55. 55. Okay. Nobody said a bad joke about the speed limit. Thank God for that. <laughs> Ruth, uh, Ruth, what do you say? Well, I think that he's three same miles. I was going to say he's the same age the as Sherm limit. Feller, which well, is. The, <laughs> no, I think he's staying with the Shirelles, so I think that he's a 58. He's going with one of the Shirelles? I think he was in the group. No, oh, he, oh, I see. No, I'm kidding, but I, he <laughs> was around during that era, so I think he's. Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. I'm going along with this because I obviously I know you less about this. You don't even know the poor thing. I don't know. And I he don't. knows Joe Smith very well. Oh, oh my. my cousin. Your cousin. My cousin. Well, that's right. That's right. No, I do have a cousin named Joe Smith. Stop laughing, Joe. He's a very big popular disc jockey yeah. in this town. Before you two guys that's were right. born, producers. And then he then he ended up uh, he ended up uh, at head of Capitol Records. That's right. He is now. And at the moment, uh, he's teaching speech to Sherm Feller. He's <laughs> a very good. <laughs> okay, as, uh, be as, teaching speech to Dave Maynard. I'm going to talk to Barbara now, and as, and as, as, as Shem Feller would say, that I never heard of this man, so... Phil Speck, you and I both, apparently, the only ones who have <laughs> heard of him. You never heard of Phil Speck? No. How old um, would you say he, uh, Phil Speck is? I'm going to say he's 57. 57. You're going to say that, are you? <laughs> when, are, when are you going to say that? Shall we just keep hanging in there? Okay, actually, Phil Spector is... I'm not waiting for some kind of sound. You have nothing going hang on. Hang on. Oh, hang on a minute. What a tight production. Timing thing. is everything. It'll rock oh, There's that crazy drummer again, Walter <laughs> Lipschitz. Okay. Bill Spector is. <laughs> Phil Spector is actually 51. Wow, Jack. Oh, so you're 51. Let me check again and make sure you have 51 years old. My goodness. It well, Ruth misled it, me. She said he was with some aged singing group or something. Yeah, well, well, actually, he was in the 60s with all the rock stars and all, so I didn't know it was that yeah. young. Jack, Jack is the guy said 52. Wow. So he was the closest. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you. so Jack actually has one, and uh, Tony has one, and uh, Barbara two, and Ruth one, and uh, Boy, what uh, Andy, oh. Andrew has three, mm -hmm. but Mike and Larry. But that lady before yeah. is 47 years old, yeah. so we all get that one. Yeah. Mike and uh, Mike and Larry actually a couple of real real losers. It's We're really just pitiful. Uh, hey, no, no, you really are. It's really pitiful. No man. Yes. If, if you're going to be a loser, this is the right show. That, that's right too, because it's, you're going to tell me it's run by losers. That's right too. That's right. And uh, after all, if I were a big star, would I be on at 13 minutes before four o'clock in the morning? Would they doing the dumb <laughs> yeah, I'm doing the dumb birthday game. Do you think you think after all the years I've been on radio? That this is the high point of my career. Can we guess how many? The high years? point of mine. I just won this game. <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. new to this business. <laughs> well. Can we guess how many years you've been in radio? Me? No, Norm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I'll tell you though, if you'd like. I know, to know. 47. 
47 years, You yes. said it the other night. I yeah. listened very carefully. You think I'll make it to 50? Said. If I make it to 50, that would be something. Wouldn't it? A half century in Boston, radio. Would they give you a party? Staking up the place. I'd have a party. <laughs> would they give me a party? Ruth. Would, would they give me a party? Ruth. Yes. That's an optical illusion. It's 74, not 47. And yeah, normally get his name in the BZ Gazette. Oh, by the way, no, really? 50 is in radio. Thank you. <laughs> That's we right. Get yeah. your yeah. Listen, we get your fella to MC your party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The longest party in history. That's right. They Did he were, call my name? I didn't hear about it. That's right. That's right. There'd be a memo out, so, and uh, my, my announcing my 50th year in broadcasting right next to Walter Lipschitz has joined the human resources staff as assistant director. I'd probably be just below that. <laughs> okay. Hey, listen. I want to thank all of you for taking part of the game. It's been great. You're welcome to put it all in your resume. Barbara, Barbara, some people hanging up already. Barbara, you... Yes, I'm here. Barbara, thank you very much. You did very well. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, and I appreciate you taking part in it. Also, uh, my friend Ruth. I want to tell you seriously, though, if you're going to talk about your fella seriously, Dave Maynard told me that many years ago. He used to stand in line and wait. <laughs> <laughs> he had, he, his big audience was with WEI, not WBZ. His one-man show he used to do you ever. <laughs> No, no, it was, not, it, was, it was in the, uh, it was 182 Tremont Street, Boston, which is where the studios of that place were, and we'd all go there after school. When we came in Boston, employment check. Oh, hold on a minute. No, we go to a, if we went to a movie in Boston, one of the things we'd to do afterwards was to go up to the Sherm Fellow Show. It was a live show. Weekends, he'd have a big audience in the big studio, but it was, it was not, the, not, not, the, right, not well, there. It was 182 when Tremont Street. When it really I was. To Dave Maynard, I will uh, uh, I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking 19, uh, like 19. 1945, yeah. back then. Well, he said he was. In, well, I remember when Dave was in college at Emerson. That's when he. No, but they, no, Dave at that time already was out of college. He'd been on the unemployment lines for about 15 years. He's a lot older than he admits to, and it's really pitiful. Very nice. Where is he in China now? No, he's in Florida. Where? Florida. Oh. Oh, he can't hear us then. No, he can't. Well, he can, sort of. <laughs> well, on the East Coast, he could hear us. He, he's in Florida. Oh, God, I withdraw everything I've said. <laughs> he's one of my dearest friends in showbiz. <laughs> no. Bergeron's got nothing on Maynard in my book. Who's, who, who, who's, who's giving me that? Who asked for your critique? <laughs> hey, uh, I, Ruth, Jordan anyway. Uh, listening. He still carries a lot of weight in this town. Who? No, no, he really does. Yeah, he's been putting on a few yeah. pounds. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, 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 anyway, Ruth, I think we're starting well, to... Well, he did call up to say Merry Christmas to everybody. No, well, we appreciate that. And, I, and I'm sorry, we're starting to get bitter now, so it's time to end this whole thing quickly before we start saying I'm things. I'm calling sure I'm fell up. I have a call number. I'm calling oh, okay. right now. Okay. Hey, take care, Ruth, and thanks bye. a lot. Bye-bye, Ruth. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye now. And uh, uh, let's see, Larry, thank you very, very much. Very good. Take care now. And also, uh, let's see, Mike and Tony, you're okay, you guys. All right, I'll see you tomorrow night. See okay. you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now, and, and bye-bye to you too, Jack. Thanks okay. a lot. Okay. Okay. Andrew, you hang in there because you are the big winner of a whole bunch of garbage we'll send to you as a prize. Thanks. Okay, thanks a lot for playing the game. Appreciate hearing from you. Bet. Bye-bye now. Picture in your mind the perfect skiing experience. Start with a mountain just minutes away. A mountain where they make it snow almost every day and where it doesn't get dark till 10 at night. A mountain with slopes for learning and trails for burning, where your whole family can afford to have fun. A mountain whose award-winning base lodge gives apres ski a new meaning. Picture Wachusett Mountain, the perfect skiing experience. Mountain skiing minutes away. Wachusett Mountain, the mountain skiing, a minutes away. Wow, 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 wow. Wachusett. Wachusett Mountain, the mountain skiing, minutes away. Wachusett Mountain, off Route 140 in Princeton, Mass. Call our snow phone at 1-800-696-SNOW for the latest conditions or more information. The following message is brought to you by the doctors of the Massachusetts Medical Society. Around the holidays, doctors see many tragic injuries from automobile accidents. The two simple rules to remember for safer driving are always wear your seatbelt and never drink and drive. Seatbelts are remarkably effective in reducing injuries and accidents. They absorb the secondary impact and keep you from being thrown against the interior of your car. 
Despite what some people say about seatbelts trapping you in your car, medical evidence shows that it's safer to wear your seatbelt than not to. And remember, drinking and driving are a lethal combination. In 50% of all fatal crashes, alcohol is a factor. Your family needs you healthy and should be spared the threat of you becoming a statistic. So please, for your sake and your family's, drive safely this holiday season. Wear your seatbelt and don't drink and drive. A message from the doctors of the Massachusetts Medical Society. Hey, we'll take some more calls in just a little bit. 254-1030. We have just uh, two open lines at the moment, and I appreciate hearing from you. We'll be around for another hour or so until 5, and then right after the 5 o'clock news, David Brudnoy sits in uh, for Tom uh, with the entire morning crew. Thank you just so much. A news about a revolutionary product proven to help build your energy, vitality, and physical endurance. Naturally, it's called Ginsana. If you like energy, if you're tired, if you feel that you've lost your competitive edge, you ought to know about Ginsana the first standardized herbal ginseng product. It provides the highest quality ginseng extract in a soft gel capsule. Let me sing that for you. It provides the highest quality ginseng extract in a soft gel capsule. Oh, yeah. I don't know why they insist that I do that, but it just keeps the sponsor just so darn happy. Ginsana was developed in Switzerland. I think I'm losing my marbles. But I have a great body, thanks to Ginsana, developed by in Switzerland and clinically tested for 25 years. Double-blind research studies have proven Ginsana helps build physical endurance. It improves cardiovascular performance and helps the body utilize oxygen more efficiently. Who benefits from Ginsana? Just about everybody. Middle-aged men and women, senior citizens, college students, professional and amateur athletes. It's often imitated, but there's just one Ginsana. Ginsana, concentrated herbal extract, all natural, no sugar or yeast, so do try it. At Brooks, Rite Aid, Walgreens, Medimart, Nature's Food Centers, Douglas, GNC, and fine drug and health food stores everywhere. For free research brochure, call 800-1800-GINSANA. That's 1-800-G-I-N-S-A-N-A, Ginsana. It helps build physical endurance. So if you try it, boy, one day you'll have a body very much like mine. <laughs> I think I offended you with that. Now, more First Night information on WBZ AM 1030. Come out to First Night 92 and take part in Boston's dazzling New Year's Eve celebration. See the ice sculptures, fireworks, store window performances, street theater, plus many special events and special performances throughout Boston. Your First Night 92 button is your ticket to all the festivities. Pick yours up at All Bon Pond French Bakery Cafes, Blockbuster Video, participating Christie's Markets, D'Angelo Sandwich Shops, participating Fleet Banks and Star Markets. Call 357-NITE for the outlet near you. Plus, the MBTA is your ticket for getting around Boston on first night. Because after 10 p.m., the T is free and will provide special late-night service for all transportation lines, including suburban rail service. Listen for more first night information from your official first night information station, WBZ AM 1030. Okay, let's talk with Keith in uh, Winchester. How you doing, Keith? Uh, pretty good, Norm. Uh, I just heard the crew that was on there and uh, some of the ages that were mentioned I could relate to. Uh, and I just recently had a, a question uh, for you folks, maybe some somebody with some historical uh, uh, or some a good memory of the station. Okay. Uh, you had an announcer, and part of his uh, line of announcing himself on the air, he was the mayor of Milo, Maine. Yeah, I know just who you're talking about. Oh I can ask, I can answer that myself. That was Nelson Bragg. It was Nelson, okay. With two Gs. And I'm, I'm familiar with Nelson and how he spells it, and I can picture him, but I couldn't come up with a name. Yeah, no, he was, because he, that was his hometown, Milo, Maine, and one of his first stations was Bangor, and then, uh, then from then on he came to WBZ, did one of the early TV shows here called uh, Swan Boat or something like that. That's correct. I remember yeah. he was one of the first ones on back in the 40s. That's right. It was a program on, on about 9 o'clock in the morning from uh, from the, from Channel 4. Right. Well, I met a gentleman the other day from Milo, and I said, well, you're the second one I've ever heard of from that town. And I said, I, and I, I, I died. I couldn't relate as to what the name was. <laughs> yeah. Well, you people there at the station don't even know because I called in about six months ago. Oh, really? And yeah, nobody could remember. No, because I, I, <laughs> I, I knew I, I was... I was uh, 
taking some broadcasting course at one of the broadcast schools here in Boston at the time. And he was one of the teachers. He was an excellent teacher also. And I remember coming to the BZ studios and watching him do a show, which at that time used to be on about 1 or 1.30 in the afternoon, a record show. And his theme song, it was a Harry James record. I've, I've, forgotten, uh, I've forgotten the name of it. But later on, he, he worked with another station, WCOP in Boston, which was country and western. 11.50 on the dot. That's right. And he wore a little <laughs> cowboy hat and, and all that kind of stuff. He eventually ended up, he lived up in, uh, when he died, he was up, lived up in Beverly or somewhere along the North Shore and worked for uh, one, of the, uh, one of the North Shore radio stations. Also used to do a talk on kind of old New England humor, like... Uh, uh, Bert and I, you know. Right, exactly. And, and, and I think that's where the Milo Main thing came from. Yeah, and he, he was very funny. I saw him. He talked before the Middleton, which is my town, Middleton Board of Trade, and he, uh, he, he captivated them, and me too. I enjoyed watching, but I, I had known, I've known him since like the mid-40s. I knew him before I got into radio. Sure. So it is Nelson Bragg, and you asked the right person. Very good. Hey, Keith, thanks a lot. Nice to talk with you. Same here. Thank you. Take care. Yeah, Bye-bye now. Picture in your mind the perfect skiing experience. Start with a mountain just minutes away. A mountain where they make it snow almost every day and where it doesn't get dark till 10 at night. A mountain with slopes for learning and trails for burning, where your whole family can afford to have fun. A mountain whose award-winning base lodge gives apres ski a new meaning. Picture Wachusett Mountain, the perfect skiing experience. Mountain skiing minutes away. Watch you sit mountain, the mountain skiing, a minute away. Watch you sit mountain, the mountain skiing, minutes away. Watch you sit mountain, off Route 140 in Princeton, Mass. Call our snow phone at 1-800-696-SNOW for the latest conditions or more information. And as a matter of fact, I think two of my early inspirations were Sherm, Sherm Fellow, we I've been kidding about, and uh, Nelson Bragg. And uh, if you've been around long enough, maybe you know both names. Although Sherm is still, still I, I guess, still does a, a radio show, one of the other stations. Anyways, a, a minute before 4 o'clock here at the WBZ, coming up to news, and then we'll take some more calls. And uh, we have about three open lines. We'll get to you, Rita, right after the news, and uh, any any. Anything else you'd care to say? We'll be here for another hour until uh, Tom Bergeron time. Tom Bergeron and the whole WBZ morning crew here on the News and Information Station, WBZ AM 1030. David Brednoy sitting in for Tom, who's on vacation this week. All right where you are now, old sport. WBZ Boston brings you up-to-the-minute news, weather, and traffic as it happens. Depend on New England's news and information station, WBZ AM 1030. Please come back tomorrow as we will air side B of this tape in another dumb birthday game. For Mike Epstein, giggler extraordinaire Jack Hart, and that jolly old broadcaster Norm Nathan, I'm Tony Nesbitt.